Hello students, our today's topic is phototropins, blue light receptors. Scientists have known for many years that plants respond to light, growing towards source of light and protecting themselves from light that is too harsh. In many of these cases, plants are responding to the level of blue light. For this, plants have phototropins. So phototropins are blue light receptors that mediate large number of responses that optimize light absorbance, uh, such as phototropism, stomatal opening, chloroplast movement, and leaf flattening. Relocation of chloroplasts to optimal positions and expansion of leaves are important responses to blue light because they maximize the efficiency of photosynthesis, right? Now, you know, blue light has several advantages over other colors. It is among the most energetic of the visible colors and thus can have a greater effect on chromophore molecules that absorb blue light. Second, for plants that live in water, blue light also penetrates deeper than other colors. Why? Because blue light has shorter waves with wavelengths between about 450 to 495 nanometers, while red light has longer waves with wavelengths around 620 to 750 nanometer. So blue light has a higher frequency and carries more energy than red light, right? Phototropins contain two light oxygen voltage, means LOV domains, and a serine threonine kinase domain. LOV domains hold flavin chromophores that absorb blue light. Now, L O V domains. L O V domains exhibit protein sequence homology to motifs found in diverse range of eukaryotic and prokaryotic uh, proteins, involved in sensing light, oxygen, or voltage. Hence, this acronym L O V. Right. These domains are connected to serine thionine kinase, which propagates the signal when the LOV domains are activated. Now, phototropin structure. Phototropins are plasma membrane associated photoreceptors of blue light and UVA radiation, right? Arabidopsis thaliana, a model plant. Its genome encodes two phototropins, FOT1 and FOT2, that mediate phototropism, chloroplast positioning, and stomatal opening, as already uh, I have told you. Phototropins are made up of two N terminal light oxygen voltage sensitive domains, LOV1 and LOV2, and a C terminal serine threonine kinase domain, right? LOV2 means are binding sites for chromophore flavin mononucleotide, FMN. LOV2 means control catalytic activity of the kinase. Now, just look at this diagram. Structure of plant phototropins can be separated into two parts, right? N terminal part and C terminal part. N terminal or photosensory input region coupled to this C terminal effector or output or regulatory region that contains a serine threonine kinase motif, this orange color, right? N terminal region comprises two LOV domains, LOV1 and LOV2, each of which binds to vitamin B derived cofactor flavin mononucleotide. F, M, N, this and this one. And uh, uh, you know, F, M, N are blue light absorbing chromophore. Protein crystallography has shown that LOV domain, this part green, consists primarily of five anti parallel beta sheets and two alpha helices, binding F, M, N tightly inside an enclosed structure. So this is a structure of FOT1 and this is a structure of FOT2. Now, 
before discussing the mechanism of action of phototropins, I just want to tell you what happens when blue light falls on phototropins, right? So, phototropin activation by blue light. Now, both Arabidopsis uh, phototropins are expressed in almost all tissues throughout the plant. In leaf tissues, they are locate, uh, localized in epidermal, guard cell, and mesophyll cells, right? Upon blue light irradiation, a fraction of FOD1 move into the cytoplasm, while fraction of FOD2 translocate to the Golgi apparatus and trans-Golgi network. Right. In addition, some fraction of FOD2 and to some extent FOD1 has been detected on the chloroplast outer membrane. Another two functions as a repressor of C-terminal kinase domain in the dark, and this mode of repression is elevated upon photoexcitation, resulting in receptor autophosphorylation throughout the protein. Now, you know what is autophosphorylation? First, phosphorylation. Phosphorylation means addition of phosphate molecule to some organic compounds such as glucose or uh, ATP, right? Autophosphorylation is a biochemical process that adds a phosphate group to protein kinase by the protein kinase itself. This phosphate group is supplied by adenosine triphosphate, that is ATP, right? Now, photo excitation of LOV2 leads to displacement of an alpha helix from the surface of the domain. Just look at this diagram. This is LOV1 and LOV2. Right? When blue light falls on this, photo excitation happens of LOV2. Right? So, this leads to unfolding of this alpha helix, means designated as J, result in activation of C terminal kinase domain. Just look at this uh, figure. Here, unfolding, when blue light falls on this, unfolding of alpha helix means this JX, right? Unfolding and uh, this C terminal kinase domain. Now, protein rearrangements within the central beta sheet uh, scaffold have been reported to play a role in propagating the photochemical signal generated within this. LOV domain to bring about protein changes at the surface. You know, these changes are necessary for the activation of this C terminal kinase domain and autophosphorylation of specific serine threonine residues. Right? Now, light activated phototropin can return to its non phosphorylated state upon incubation in darkness. Right? This is non-phosphorylated state, right? And this is phosphorylated form of this domain. Now, mechanism of action. Relocation of chloroplast, as already I told you, to optimal position is an important blue light response because it maximizes the efficiency of photosynthesis. Light regulated chloroplast movement depends on phototropin signaling and predominantly rely on the dynamics of chloroplast actin filaments. Now, when light is weak, both phototropins regulate chloroplast accumulation along periclinal cell walls, right? Periclinal perpendicular to the direction of light. If you remember, we have already discussed, right? Which improves the efficiency of light capture. Meanwhile, under strong light conditions, chloroplasts exhibit 
an avoidance response which is manifested by positioning at anticlinal cell walls means parallel to the direction of light now this mechanism protects photosystem from photo inhibition and chloroplast from photo damage you know this light regulated photo one autophosphorylation appears to be the initial event in the transmission of the light signal right after phototropin autophosphorylation a protein 3 3 type protein binds rapidly to the activated photoreceptor such proteins protein 3 3 type proteins are often involved in signaling and upon binding they can alter enzymatic activities modify the subcellular localization or serve as a landing platform for additional interaction right when flavin f m uh, n chromophore absorb light the surrounding protein uh, passes the signal along ultimately changing how the plant will respond means to receive light or to avoid light right for phototropins the signal is passed to the kinase domain which modifies other signaling protein in the cell right analysis of mutants with non phototropic uh, 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 hypocotyls has led to the identification of two classes of protein that are involved in this phototropin signaling nph3 non phototropic hypocotyl 3 it's a member of the first class similar to fot1 nph3 is associated with plasma membrane by an unknown mechanism right nph3 is a member of a large plant specific gene family with more than 30 members in arabidopsis so nph3 is a novel protein that directly interacts with fot1 nph3 is thought to serve as a protein scaffold to assemble components of a phototropin receptor complex arabidopsis mutants lacking nph3 fail to show photo uh, phototropism demonstrating that nph3 is essential for this response right in addition nph3 is required for optimal leaf positioning and leaf flattening in model plant a protein closely related to nph3 known as root phototropism 2 rpt2 also interact with fot1 and is required for both phototropism and stomatal opening by blue light so it has been suspected that asymmetric growth also requires a gradient of plant hormone auxin right pin3 a member of pin gene family in arabidopsis appears to be particularly important to establish auxin gradient in response to changes in the gravity vector in and phototropism right so all these uh, genes required for phototropin right so if any question uh, or any problem you can just write in the comment section so that i can answer right thank you so much